What is up, players? It is I, Marius von Pfrofeldink, emissary to his lord, high the Emperor Karl Franz of the city of Altdorf. Long may he reign. Today, Warboss Tay is going to show you how to paint up a pistolier of the province of Avalon. But before he does, I shall give you some brief fluffy goings on about the city state and province known as Avalon in His Majesty's Empire. Avalon is an extremely wealthy province. Its borders include the dangerous Blackfire Pass, a common invasion route into the Empire. The colors of Avalon are black and yellow, and the soldiers are known for showy uniforms and ostentatious war gear. The state banner is a sun, and has been since the surviving nobles of downf downfall in Solind settled in Avalon. The province is currently without an elect account, and there is talk of reinstating the banner of the previous household. This, of course, taken from uniforms and heraldry, soldiers of the empire. Today I shall be uh, showing you how to paint, like I said, a pistolier from the pistol core of the grand province of Avalon. Now, <clears throat> I'm just going to show you some of the various markings on the shield. There you see the son of Solund, which uh, was the um, the province that has been ravaged by the orc warlord Gorbad Ironclaw. Now, getting on to our model, we'll see that this uh, test model that Wombostay had painted had a um, purely halved color scheme, meaning that the bottom was one half, then the top was painted in one half. For this next pistolier, we shall be painting him in quarters, which means that the left arm will correspond with the color of the right left trouser, and so on and so forth. So, if you would like to see the colors that Warboss Tay will be using for this tutorial, please check in the description below. Now, getting on to the painting. First, what you will need is to take your Chaos Black and to paint everything from the trousers down. And if you're wondering how to get your glorious steed to the caliber of excellence that this painted steed is at, then you will find the How to Paint an Empire Pistolier Horse video slightly further up the playlist. And you're going to be painting everything because we shall be using black armor as the as the color for our Avalon Pistolier. Further on in the chapter, for those of you who have the uniforms and heraldry book at home and are following along, you will notice that there is an entry in the Avalon section that says black and steel and as well as highly polished silver are favorite colors worn by the Avalon army. Which is very good. The only other army that I know of which uses such a large amount of blackened armor and armaments would be the city-state of Nuln because they have the Imperial School of Engineers there and everything gets dirty there anyway. <coughs> Don't trust engineers. Not a single one of them. Now, if you make mistakes, you can always co cover them up later. I'm doing right now. 
for those of you out there who have been playing with the new Empire rules, reading the new book, looking at the new models, I hope these tutorials are of benefit to you. Now, what we will also be doing is painting Chaos Black onto the armor that our Pistolier is wearing while we wait for the pants to dry. We are also going to choose at this point where which quartered part of the uniform will correspond which, with which color. And I would like to say that we shall go with, since, since the right arm is more prominently placed forward, as an artist I would say that the right arm should be the one with the more prominent color, this case being yellow. Which means that the left leg will also be yellow, and in reverse, as reverse, the left arm and the right leg shall be in black. You will also be painting with your Chaos Black the braces, or at the cuffs rather, of each sleeve because no matter what color the, the sleeve is, black or yellow, the braces, the sleeve cuffs, must be black. There. It's quite a good start, I believe. Now these techniques can be used for any of your models. Uh, this one just happens to be the one modeled to be pointing two pistols to his left. <coughs> Next step we were going to be doing is... Oh! I see that War Boss Tear has returned, so I shall leave it up to him to finish the rest of this tutorial. Excuse me, gotta go! Alright. Oh, it's recording. And somebody started painting my model. Hmm. Okay, what's up players? We are gonna continue, I guess. <coughs> <coughs> um and where did Marius leave off? Uh the yellow, yes. So I'm gonna be trying out some of this new Averland Sunset again. I mean we tried it out a little bit in one of my previous tutorials and it seems to work pretty good so I'm gonna give it a little mix, slap some of it onto my wet palette then carefully wiping it off. Bringing it onto this model. So right now I'm um I'm uploading the <laughs> how to paint a, a Vargeist tutorials. I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. It's probably it's it'll probably already be you know uploaded and available while I'm filming this. But <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. <coughs> Let's zoom out just a little bit. Had a lot of fun with that mo uh, with, with that painting tutorial. Those models are very good, and um, they look great. They've got great rules. Uh, people love them, and um, I just can't wait to get into the painting tutorial for the Crypt Horrors. Igor is chomping at the bit. Like literally. He has a bit in his mouth and he chomps at it. It helps me with my sleep apnea, master. Okay.
So I think I might have mentioned it in one of my other videos, but the reason I decided to do uh, these guys and not a regular old state trooper in Averlin was because um, <clears throat> uh, Averlin, in most of the fluff, is known as having a uh, a very very strong culture of raising horses and um, the the county of Averlin is actually in the fluff described as being just a lot of flat rolling plains with lots of free area for the horses to run and um, I just thought you know that's so so great to to base a, a, a pistolier outfit from these guys will be very accomplished and practiced riders give them a good <clears throat> vibrant color scheme like this black and yellow and it, it should be very very effective and look very good on the battlefield too so I'm painting the trousers now and it's not going very well for me at this moment it's still just the first application and I'm using a little bit of watered down but it's it's kind of streaky and um, you wouldn't have this much of a problem if you're using just your old school E and in Dark Sun, but <clears throat> but it wouldn't be as vibrant at the same time. So we're we're gonna try painting on a little bit, just a little bit more. Let's see if that does anything. If not, I'm just gonna let it let it dry and then come back. Let it dry. When you don't thin down your paints. Okay, hey, so moving on in the next step, we're going to take some talent flesh and we're going to paint in the hands and the face because those are the two areas of the model that you can see. And man, after painting those Vargeists who are like all flesh, it's really nice to do a model that's got different textures, different parts. And the Vargeists have like the wings and <clears throat> You know the fur and stuff, but like overall, I guess it just depends too. Because sometimes I feel like painting up something with like lots of different surface areas, like these pistoliers. Sometimes I feel like painting up crazy giant killer bat monster. So I'm giving the new uh, Empire book a read, and I was reading through the uh, Master Engineer section, and I really like the picture that they they made for him. You can see that he's got like a very steampunk kind of look to him, and um, I think that's kind of interesting that they're going in that direction. I was wondering whether or not they'd do a little bit more to you know appeal to the steampunk base aka War Machine players. Privateer Press. Um, but yeah, I, I love like the evocative little illustration. He's got like some kind of weird thing that he's holding, some kind of contraption, and um, he's got like a little clockwork, steam-driven like dog creature at his feet, and like it's just so interesting and. The character is just really, really well done. And then just a couple pages away is this crazy artwork for the, the uh, I don't even know what it's called, Luminarc Hurricanum, Hurricanum, and it's just nowhere near as cool. 
Okay, um, let's let's do something fun and paint in the uh, gold gilding. So we're gonna use dwarf bronze in this step. And yeah, just like I said, we're gonna be painting in the gold detailing. If you have or ever painted before the uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun, we're gonna do kind of the same kind of scheme just because of how closely Averland's color scheme yellow and yellow and black is. So you're gonna do like gold. Oh, I gotta sneeze. No, I'm not. No, I am. No, I'm not. So normally I would say like to, if you're gonna do metallics, you have to um, base coat them first. But I am just going to paint these lines on. Should be okay. The reason I say it should be okay is because this is not what it's eventually going to look like too. We're going to add um, burnished gold and make it look even better. So you should have something like that on both legs. I'm also going to paint the edges as well as The great thing about him wearing black armor is that if you mess up, you could just, you know, paint some chaos black right back over it. <clears throat> when I take a break from filming, when I um, cut to the next clip, I'm also going to paint some of these straps, Camry Brown, which is going to. Um, which is going to show off nicely off of the black trousers and the yellow trousers. I'm just painting some edging on the armor now. Right there. Okay, I'm gonna paint the rest of this guy's armor up and then we'll see you in the next part of this video. In this part of the video, let me show you what we're going to be doing with the pistol. You're going to take Calp and Brown, which is going to be the base for our gold, and you're going to paint the little pistol nub here, the brass workings that are going to be up here, as well as the um, wood of the piece over here. You're going to take Bleached Bone, which is going to be your um, pistol handle wood, and you're just going to be painting it like how we painted the holster pistols over here. So the handle and under the barrel here. The bar barrel itself is going to be chainmail. So let's get to it. the Empire Tactica threads, like on Warseer, Warhammer Empire, just to see how useful these guys are now in 8th edition, especially with the new book, if they're as good as, of a deal as I kind of think and remember them being. And um, comparatively to the Outriders, a lot of people think that the Pistoliers, because they can move and shoot, are better at their job now than they were back in 7th. I don't know, what do you guys think? The Outriders have move or shoot, but they've got their mini guns, which shoot like three shots per. They're just really expensive. Whereas these guys can do the move or shoot. They can run away, reform, move, shoot, uh, if they make their reform test. For those of you who play the game, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> uh, I'd love to hear your input on 
these guys. I guess you could also use the silver of the chainmail to make the um, trigger housing on the underside of the gun, which I did not do on this side. Right there. <clears throat> I like how the bleach bone makes it very <clears throat> um, rich, by rich I mean wealthy looking kind of surface material. That's the kind of sad thing about these old, or yeah, like the non-current paints. Like bleached bone is such a tricky, tricky color to work with because it doesn't go on very well over a darker base coat. So you can see each individual stroke. I'm really. This is one of the ones I'm, I think I'll pick up the new layer paints from Games Workshop. <clears throat> see if it's better at spreading over the dark surface. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the feather while we're letting our pistols dry. So you can go ahead and press pause now if you want to, to um, do the other pistol since I'm only doing one if you're painting along with me. <coughs> and this is an Averland Pistolier, but if you're using one of my other paint schemes like for Altdorf or you know, Middenheim, Nordland, anything else. You can do the same uniform, but um, keep the, or do, do the different uniform, but keep the same technique for the pistols will work. Okay, <clears throat> so in the next step, we're gonna take Astronomic on Gray. And we're going to paint up this feather. Now with Astronomicon Grey you want to be careful because it's a foundation paint and it's, you know, in that it's uh, pretty thick. Oh, I still have to make that video with a conversion chart for all the new colors. I actually have two colors, or two feathers, on my guy, so I'm gonna be a little bit different, and I'm gonna paint it a different color. Um, possibly green, but for the, main, for the main feather we're gonna paint Astronomicon gray and just leave it as is. Yeah, I think green, uh, green might be the trick. Little spot color. I'm gonna use my Narlock green as a base. And everybody's talking about the new big kits. Are they good? Are they not good? Did they ruin our army? The uh, Hurricanum and the What's the other one called? Luminarch. I think I even mentioned it in a previous video. Or clip of this video. I don't know, I'm filming this in the morning. The other part of this video I filmed last night, so I don't even remember what I was talking about. I ramble a lot. Go night, Igor. Igor. Why are you talking to me, master? Yes, I was asking you a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I was listening to my Miley Cyrus on my iPad. So 
even though green is not a color of Aberlin, it's uh, Sterling colors, the, the spot of color, the flash of color is going to be a nice little, um, you know, spot color. You can see it in the uniforms and heraldry book too. You've got the main color all over black, black and yellow. And then some of them have a little flash of red or green or blue. So that's what I'm doing with him. Okay, so <clears throat> once the brown is dried, you're gonna take your dwarf bronze. Once the Captain Brown is dried, you're gonna take your dwarf bronze and you are going to Igor, you know, small stone. Would you be so kind as to fetch me my dwarf bronze? Alright. Hmm. Here it is. So we're gonna paint our all the gold parts on the pistol. Back here, little nub. Casing or housing or whatever this metal piece is called. <clears throat> and I actually thought that a different change of color would be good for the for the hammer. Hammer time! So we're gonna paint silver the um the little piece right over here. You can see I did on this pistol right over here. Okay, <clears throat> in the next section of our tutorial, we're going to paint the slashes in the sleeve. We're going to take our Chaos Black. Actually, no, I don't think I did Chaos Black in, in my uh, test model. I think I actually used... Here we go. Bad Ab Black, just because it's, it's uh, easier to control where it goes, and if you mess up, it's not such a big deal. Gonna load up your brush with some of that and we're just going to paint in the slashes. See how easy that is? Plus if you make a mistake you get any on the, the main part on the upper area. Oh and it's a lot easier to clean off. Oops, sorry about that everybody. So we're gonna continue painting our slashes. This is when it's really good to have a uh, fine detail brush. Then you can really control where it goes. And how much paint goes into the slashes. Yeah, so since I used Averlin base as the base color for this and not um, Ian and Dark Sun, I actually think it's really good. It's brighter than Ian and Dark Sun was as a base. There we go. While we have our Bedai Black out, we're going to just paint in, um, we're going to wash all of the straps the gold detailing up here up here just wash all of the, the areas on the model that we painted already Okay, by now your Astronomicon Grey should be dry as well, as well as the pistol, so we're just going to give the gold and the silver on those pieces a little bit of a wash, and the feather as well. As 
see how that the wash just goes really nicely into the into the shadows. I'm gonna find my um, Thraka green and also wash the feather, the green feather, so that it gets that kind of same shadow treatment as well. And also tints it a little bit more green. <laughs> okay, so um, let's paint a little bit more silver. I forgot the. I don't know what they're called, stirrups? Things your feet go into. Here on either side. Okay. If you make a mistake, then simple because the armor is chaos black, so you can just go back and fix it. Okay, and um, <coughs> while we're still waiting for that bad eye black and the slashes to dry, we're going to take um, the base that we use, Averlin Yellow, or Averlin Sunrise, whatever the heck it's called, and we are going sunset, and we're going to paint likewise the slashes on the other side. Now for this, we are going to have to load our brush up with the actual paint, so you want to be a little bit more. Uh, careful. That's why we want to do the wash side first, so we get used to the technique of painting inside the slashes. And you'll see in the Empire book they do this a lot too with the with the illustrations and the the um, display models. All of them have their slashes painted in different colors. Yeah, this Averland Sunset is doing a great job of of staying um, where you where you paint it and being nice and bright, and not as muted as the uh, old foundation colors were. Let me find where the slashes are in the black. There we go. So you get something like that. Just one. Looks like you just have to do one, um, one application, one coat of this because of how well it goes on. Okay, so the new base colors get an A plus from me. Just weird angles you have to figure out. Like down here. That's why it's good to have you guys on little cork bases or whatever just so that you can change the angles whenever you want. Okay, there. I think that looks pretty good, right? Um, for like up here, you see the wash is starting to dry out. Let it dry as much as uh, you want and then when you find appropriate, just go back in with some Chaos Black and actually paint in those slashes. Right there, right there. Okay, and um, what else are we doing? We're going to take our Ogren Flesh Wash while we're letting all this other stuff dry. And we're going to paint in the hands and the face. And if you're doing a whole unit of these, then it's even uh, even better. Because then by the time you get to the end, the first guy will be completely dry. Green Master. Thank you, Igor. OK, 
Okay, at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out our burnished gold <coughs> and start painting up all of the areas that we painted in dwarf bronze. The edging of the armor, the little pieces on the pistol. The thing with burnished gold is that you cannot really paint it on by itself first. It's gotta go over something else. And in the new range, I'm not sure what the what the equivalent would be. Hopefully they fixed that problem. They made a kind of burnished gold. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. Quiet on set. So um, the burnished gold, you cannot paint it on by itself because it's such a really thin kind of paint. I think I, I tried that myself. I tried to paint it like straight onto my models and I was like, I couldn't figure out why it looks so weird. It's because it has to go over a base coat of another kind of gold, either dwarf bronze or shining gold in the old range. And like I said, hopefully they fixed that because it was, a, it was a kind of a hassle to deal with. So I just painted onto helmets and all the detailing, wherever it, wherever you see any gold trim. And it builds on the dwarf bronze really nicely, especially after that chaos or a beta black wash. These Pistolier Riders have such great details, but I mean, you could use this, you could carry this over to a great sword or a halberdier's. Most of the uniforms for the troops that the Empire uses are is pretty much the same. Slash sleeves, a trim on the armor. You know, so you can really just watch one of these videos, whichever province you want your Empire Boys to come from, and just copy and paste over the entire army. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry, then we'll come back. And um, looks like I gotta clean up the sleeves on this side just a little bit with some, some Chaos Black. So I'll go and do that, and then um, when we continue, should I make a third video? It's already, it already looked like we're kind of coming up to the end here. Um, yeah, I think I'll split it up into a third video. It's to do <coughs> final, final details, let all this dry, and then we'll do a, we'll do a final small little video, we'll finish the feather. The feathers will um, highlight up the skin and we'll do a little recap. Okay, so we'll see you in the third part of how to paint a pistolier.